The Entrepreneur's Library, episode 24. Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Library, the only book-centric podcast that reviews all the top-selling business books and shares authors' perspective firsthand. This is your resource to finding the next great book that will enable you to grow personally and professionally. Welcome your host, Wade Danielson. Thank you for joining us today on the EL. Today we have Diana Kander, author of All In Startup. Welcome, Diana, and thank you for joining us on the Entrepreneur's Library. I'm excited to be here, Wade. Thank you. Will you take just a moment to introduce yourself and tell us just a little bit about you personally? Sure. Uh, my name is Diana Kander. I am an entrepreneur. I teach entrepreneurship at the University of Missouri, and I serve as a senior fellow at the Kauffman Foundation, the world's largest foundation dedicated to entrepreneurship and education. Okay, very good. Thank you for sharing that. Now let's jump right into your book, All In Startup, which was just made available for purchase on June 30th of 2014 and has already been an award winner. I I was looking at it, a New York Times and Wall Street Journal bestseller. So congrats on that. Thank you so much. Dana, we're going to move fairly quickly, but we're going to cover all the questions that our readers slash listeners are, are, are really wondering about your book. And the first one is, what was the inspiration behind writing All In Startup? I worked with a lot of entrepreneurs um, through my position at the Kauffman Foundation, hundreds of entrepreneurs, and I found them all getting stuck at very similar points, and I felt like I was uh, reliving the movie Groundhog Day, where I would have the same conversations over and over again. So it it was born out of a frustration of, of me trying to save myself some time and wanting to create, uh, you know, a pamphlet or a video or something Uh, to have people watch before we started meeting so that they could avoid all the common pitfalls that most people were facing. Okay. And what would you say makes your your book, I'm sorry, different from others regarding the same topic? Well, it's very different in that I try to convey the lessons through a fictional story. So it's a novel through and through. It takes place at the World Series of Poker, and it's got more sexual tension than any business book you have ever read. So... Uh, Most people find that they finish the book in one or two days, Um, so it's a very, very quick read. (laughs) That's very unique. Yeah. Very good. How do you want the reader to engage with your book? Is yours a book that you really want them to start from beginning to end or really go through and use it as a resource or a a textbook and kind of cherry pick? You almost have to read it from beginning to end because it's a novel, so none of the chapters will make sense if you haven't read um, you know, up until that chapter. Uh, The storyline is just as much a part of the book as the lessons that you take out of it. Okay. Diana, we're to my favorite part of the entire interview, and that's where we allow you to do a deep dive of your creation. So will you give us a a great summary of what your book is all about? Sure. So the book is about Owen Chase. He's a very smart uh, MBA who worked as a business consultant, and he had lots of great business ideas, but he decided that one, he just couldn't resist. And so he started a company and we joined him a year after he started it. And he's hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. And he's pretty much on the verge of shutting the whole thing down. And through pure happenstance, he gets a ticket to the World Series of Poker. And he decides to just go to the tournament, clear his mind and figure out what to do about the company. And there he meets a very successful entrepreneur named Samantha. And Sam has started and sold a number of companies, and she's seen a lot of entrepreneurs in his position. And so she helps him start from scratch, hit the reboot button on his company, and figure out what he's been doing wrong um, in his approach this entire time. And so he's basically got nine days at the tournament to turn his company around um, and you know, see if he can save all, all the jobs and all the money that he's invested Um, inside the company. Owen figures out that what he did wrong at the very beginning was he was focusing on the product that he was building um, and not as much on the customers that he was solving. And he was making a lot of assumptions about his customers that turned out to be very false. So uh, the first assumption that he made was that people were interested in a uh, cheaper product. So uh, Owen's business is a custom bicycle manufacturing shop. And he builds custom bikes from used bike parts and sells them for about half of what you can buy a road bike for. So his assumptions were that people would be very interested in paying half of what they can buy a new uh, bicycle for and that they would use his website to make the purchases. And um, the sales just aren't 
uh, where Owen projected them in his financials. And so Sam encourages him to start interviewing his customers, as he should have done from the very beginning um, of his company. And when he does, he learns that price is not as important to people as he thought it, it was. I mean, he just assumed that people wanted something cheaper, but he was wrong. And more importantly, he learns that people aren't as willing to buy something, a bicycle, uh, without testing it out um, at a physical store. And that's an assumption that he was positively sure about that turns out to also be wrong. So um, understanding his customers better, he tries to find another solution uh, that will serve their uh, needs. And I would also add that Sam is a very, very helpful mentor, but she has some vices of her own. She's got a bit of a drinking problem, and uh, she's continuously making sexual advances um, at Owen, who's married. And so he's trying to glean uh, this business knowledge that she has to offer um, without uh, succumbing to, to her advances. Um, and I don't want to give away any more than that. You're going to have to read the book to see what happens to his business and his marriage. Okay, excellent. And I'm looking at here, I'm looking through the the, the table of contents, and there's a ton of, I, I like the fact that there's a, a ton of chapters, and basically they break down, um, it's almost like each one, you know, you're not fooling anyone, or you can't sell anything by doing all of the talking. I love how uh-huh. each one kind of breaks down, um, so it's a story, but it also creates a, an atmosphere where you're learning in every single chapter. Yeah, I mean, the best lessons in life come from real life experiences and stories. And a lot of entrepreneurs who have read it are surprised at how much they're connecting with the characters. And it's just because Owen is an amalgam of all the entrepreneurs that I had the opportunity to interact with. So the reason he sounds so similar is because he is just like another entrepreneur starting a company. Excellent. So there's a ton of, of principles in this book and that's what makes, you know, our next question fairly difficult. And that's, if there was only one concept or, or principle or action item that someone could take out of reading your entire book, what would you want that to be? So my favorite lesson out of the book is um, the less you gamble, the luckier you're going to get. So a lot of people think that entrepreneurship is a lot like professional gambling, that they have to take huge wild risks with their capital in order to be successful. Well, poker players... Um, don't see themselves as gamblers. They actually see themselves as strategists, that they take very, very calculated risks. And if entrepreneurs started thinking more that way, how can I reduce the likelihood of loss or risk in this particular bet? How can I minimize the bets that I'm making? Um, And maybe rather than making one huge leap, make a series of small bets um, that I can make to significantly reduce my risk and the amount of capital I'm putting up, um, they would find that they're going to get lucky a lot more often. Excellent. Okay, very good. Do you have a favorite quote from your book? And I know this is kind of a kind of a weird um, question to ask someone, but but I know that a lot of writers they write something and they really feel like it's it's you know profound. It maybe it may be in their own mind, maybe it actually is. But is there something that you that you wrote that you really felt like uh, was powerful? You know, I don't have a favorite quote. I have some sentences that I love. They make me smirk every time I read them. And my favorite sentence in the book, it sounds really funny and I can't tell you why it's my favorite sentence, but uh, they meet They meet early on at a bar and Sam notices that um, Owen didn't offer to buy her a drink. He's just trying to sell his product to her. And I think the sentence is something like, uh, she was disappointed that he was all business and um, he wasn't trying to pump alcohol into her as it was. She was going to have to have, she was going to have to pump alcohol in herself. <laughs> okay. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> and Diane, if there was only one other book besides your own that you could recommend based on the way it created a paradigm shift for you, what would, uh, what would you suggest? So every year I read Keith Ferrazzi's never eat alone. It's a book that made a monumental difference to me and thinking about how to create real meaningful relationships in a professional setting. So it's not like you're trying to um, make connections in order to get something out of it, but create real uh, connections and friendships out of professional contacts that are um, mutually beneficial if possible. And it's, it's so important. I have um, all my employees read it. Um, I, like I said, revisit it once a year. So it's, it's an important book in my life. 
Excellent. And I know this might be a sore question to ask someone who just got done writing a book, but do you already have uh, future plans for a, for another book? Um, I don't. You know, start, writing a book is a lot like starting a business, and I'm trying to make sure that this message gets out to as many people as possible before uh, turning on to my next venture. Okay. Are there ideas that you have for next one, just in case that's uh, in well, the future? Uh, yeah, this book is about the very, very early stage of starting a company and, and launching an idea. So there's uh, lots of other stages to a company where people fall into common pitfalls uh, that I think I could address. But uh, again, just focusing on uh, getting this message out in front of as many people as possible. Absolutely. Okay, very good. Well, Diane, before we depart, can you recommend the best way for our listeners to one, get more information on you and then two, to get more information on All In Startup? Sure. They can either go to dianacander.com and there's more information about uh, both me and the book and that's uh, D-I-A-N-A-K-A-N-D-E-R or they can go to amazon.com and search for either me or the book and, and read all the reviews and find it that way. Okay, very good. Diana, thank you so much for your time and coming on with us today. Absolutely. Thanks, Wade. Absolutely. Take care. As always, thanks again for listening in today. If you'd like to get your hands on All In Startup or any of the other resources mentioned by Diana, just look at the show notes at the elpodcast.com. Looking for your next book idea? Head over to the elpodcast.com, where Wade shares his amazing resource, the top 10 business books recommended by over 500 entrepreneurs with you for free. That's the elpodcast.com. Till the next time, keep it on the EL.